Hello and welcome to Fist Pro Productions. Um, this is my very first how-to video, how to make a air cannon. We were experimenting a lot with this um, to go get ready for a thing for our church. And we tried first using uh, potato guns, using propane propelled potato guns. It worked fine, it shot things out good. Uh, but we were thinking it's a little too dangerous to be work using with, with the crowd. So we decided to go to an air gun. We've seen lots of different ones. This is not a new design. It's um, a takeoff of a couple designs. But we decided we were gonna show you exactly how we did it with a good video that detailed everything out. Uh, because we found that there was a lot of videos we had to go to, to get the product. This is our finished product. Uh, this is model two. We have two models. The other model I'll show you on another video. It does not um, work as good as this model. I really like this model. A lot of the models of this using the Orbit water sprinkler system had you drill out the uh, middle and take out the solenoid and become hand powered. I didn't like that um, because I don't mind having a little battery. Uh, we have three 9 volt batteries in here and uh, it just moves the solenoids and it fires beautifully and this is just a doorbell. I will go through all the parts in one second but this is the finished product and we will show you some shooting of it after but right now we're going to show you all the parts so you can make sure you get the right part. Hello and we're back here with the parts that we use. Um, I wanted to go through each little part so you can understand it. It is not always easy to see on a video what part we use so I just want to give a good description of each part and I'll work, walk through each part and what they were used for. Um, so in Canada, this costs about $65 to finish this model of the uh, air cannon. In the United States, you can do it for about $45 to $50 because mainly because this part is only $18 in the United States and this is our Orbit water pump. Um, it is here in this box right here. If you want to take a good look at the box, we'll give you a picture as well. Um, it's only $18. It's $30 in Canada, so that makes a big difference and everything's a little more expensive in Canada. So as far as tools, we need a half inch drill and we need a little wee drill um, and that's for putting on our doorbell and our trigger, which is our trigger on later. And we need a screwdriver, a drill. We use a drill press for um, the heavy drills. Uh, we need some Teflon tape and some black tape, um, which is electrical tape, a screwdriver, and some snips for our wires, and then primer. This is uh, VC180 purple primer for your pipe, and then we have some uh, P PVC40, um, which is for our white pipe, because yeah, that's uh, the rating we have is PVC40, and this is the pipe right here, so you can see the numbers there, um, PS. There we go, and so we use that. Now, this is all the parts laid out in front of you. There's a little nipple for filling it up, and we have a uh, doorbell, that is our trigger. We have this for our trigger assembly, which is just a normal standard ABS pipe. And then we have some one inch threaded, threaded things that will go into the pump, water pump. And then we have some couplers. We use our two inch couplers. We use these couplers um, as you can see inside, to uh, mount the the expansion chamber, uh, compression chamber, and the uh, and the barrel, and then we have some one inch to two inch uh, reducers or expanders, threaded female side, and then sleeve outside. Okay, and then the last part is some battery terminals it's for our battery system, so that we can use the electric trigger. And oh, one last thing, the cap. The very important two inch cap. This goes on one end and creates your pressure. So I'm gonna walk through exactly how we use each one of these parts. These are all our parts uh, you'll need. You'll need another one of these for your barrel as we have one here, this is our compression chamber one. The barrel one we're doing at two feet long. Okay, so in interest of doing this uh, quick and uh, easy, I'm not gonna show you every last little bit of detail, but I'm gonna show you a few quick simple things. First thing you do is you're gonna get your primer out. Um, I like to take a little bit off like this. And you're going to find all your couplings. On every couplink, you're going to take your couplink like this, and you're going to fill the with the primer until it's nice and pink and purple in there, just like that. You're going to do the other side, like so. All these things, they're going to be nice and filled with primer. Now the primer allows the glue to set and connect. It's very important that the glue sets and connects because if it doesn't set and connect, then uh, we have some problems because it will leak and uh, we're under pressure here, so we want it to be nice and set. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all our couplings. I'm gonna do it to the outside of the uh, changing, the expanders. 
um, and see like this, it's outside anywhere where there's going to be glue in the future. I prime it so it's like that, nice and easy, does it. And there we are, it stinks. You should do this in a well ventilated area, which I'm not in right now, unfortunately. Um, do not do the threaded side. That we done with Teflon tape. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do all that. And then I'll come okay, just one little trick I want to tell you before we get any further along. Um, you should always do a dry test. This is not completely dry. So I already primed that. But you should make sure your couplings go in. And I would build your whole unit dry um, so that you know that's good. So you take that, you put your couplings in, and go through each one and make sure everything fits. Uh, it's better to do it dry because once you put the glue in, there's no going back. Uh, another quick thing I want to mention, take time to clean your parts, make sure there's nothing in there. Um, we don't want any specks, any dirt, it gets in the airlines, clogs things up. So I just keep a cloth by and just clean them all up nicely and then the primer will do the rest. Thanks. Okay, we're back from the primer drying, we give it a chance to dry. All our pieces are primed in front of us. The only thing is not there, primed in front of us, is the barrel. Um, we are leaving that so I can show you how to cut the barrel. Just make sure that uh, it's all uh, done in the treatment before. So there you are, that's all the pieces. So the next part of this uh, job is the glue. Now gluing is a little bit of a tricky part because you don't want to do too much glue but you don't want to do too little. The last person I had gluing was my partner in crime and he uh, put a little too much and he got it all over another valve as it dropped, went down and and we got a couple of things stuck and I had to work a little bit with a monkey wrench to get it all undone and uh, before it set in and you don't have a lot of time for this to set so you want to glue it in nicely in there like so you can see the amount of glue and then you want to glue it on your product um, and in this case it'll be our, our uh, compression chamber and we're just going to glue it around there get a nice amount it's not going to go anywhere once that's all glued on and then very simply just slide this in here like so so there's our coupling on our thing and I usually just turn it upside down give it a little push make sure I turn it a bit make sure the glue sets there we are look in the cup sink you can see that's nice and in there with no problems there we are. This is then going to go on to here, which will be reducer, reduced on to here. Okay, and I'll show you that step a little later with that. Um, and then on the other side of your compression chamber, we're going to glue this on now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue. You've seen how much I put glue on. I'm going to show you this next stage after. Okay, right, so we have glued this together. We've glued the coupling on. We've drew, glued the barrel or the compression chamber. In this case, it's a compression chamber, 18 inches long, and the, uh, you can see here the thread, we haven't done anything with the thread um, yet because we want that thread to go into one of these and we're going to Teflon tape that. We're going to move on to that next, uh, but it's all ready. We didn't put the cap on because I didn't want you to, uh, to have to drill after. It's easier to drill it first. You drill a hole in there, you drill your uh, half inch hole in there for your nipple for filling it up. So we're going to do that later. I'm going to show you how to drill the hole on this one. Um, I'm drilling right under the, the word LASCO and right after the letter 40 which is right in the middle and that's where my middle point is. I've measured it out and it's good to get the middle and that's where I'm drilling it. I'm using a half inch uh, drill bit and it's going to use it on the drill press. So we have this drilled out now. We have a hole in it um, and we're going to now take this nipple. We're going to take the nipple and we're going to put Teflon tape on it and we're going to screw that right in there. Now you can use some JB weld after around the outside. We haven't had to yet, so we haven't, um, but we have it just in case. So there we are, we have the nipple attached now. You can see it's drilled through and there's the nipple. And this is where we're gonna air fill our things with. Well, we're moving on to the Orbit. Um, this is the Orbit uh, water sprinkler system. Uh, as I said, in America, it's about $18. In Canada, it's about $30. Um, this is the system. I stripped down this part because we don't need it right now and just gets in the way. We will need this later. Um, put it in. It just simply screws on. Um, so I took it off just to make it easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, pieces, our adapters, our one inch adapters, which is this is the Orbit one inch. It comes in a three quarter inch. It's a lot easier to go from a one inch um, to size bigger. So I would recommend this if you can. And then um, we're going to need our Teflon tape. So then we just take our Teflon tape. If you haven't used Teflon tape before, I'm going to do it really quickly just so you can see it. So we just put Teflon tape in this area like this. 
filling it in so like so all along our, our grooves that's going to seal it basically the Teflon tape creates a seal for the air um, or water if you were doing water uh, to prevent it from leaking we're just going to go like this we're going to do the whole thing um, it doesn't really matter we don't have to do that because we're not going to thread the whole thing then we just tear it off make a nice pushed in there's your Teflon tape then it very easily starts to hand hand screw in there as I said very easily doesn't want to do it right now there we go and then we just hand screw it tight um, and then we hand screw it into the uh, tube and we use the two things to tighten each other and uh, that'll come back and it'll be all done so we're now we're ready to glue this on the back of our compression chamber at that point our compression chamber will be complete and ready to be filled for test now some models you could take an elbow here and bring it back around with a U um, bring it back around so your barrel and your and your compression chamber are mounted um, over top of each other or parallel and that makes it nice and short our model is a little longer you can make it shorter that way um, I just didn't want to spend the extra money on the elbow so when gluing this you want to be careful not to get any in your valve um, So this here is the the um, pump, orbital pump connected to our compression chamber and we have the threaded um, one inch uh, male um, end ready to put on our barrel. Now we can go with a two inch barrel now or we can go with an inch and a half barrel. And on this model I'm actually going to change the model slightly different from the other one just to give it a test. We're going to go with an inch and a half barrel here. Um, so that's going to be a little different. and. Uh, we want to do multiple tests to see which one works the best and these barrels can be interchangeable because they're on threaded rod um, so so barrel assembly is much like the assembly of the back maybe in birch beer we have our female uh, screw on it's going to go on there it's going to tighten up we have our sleeve which is going to be glued into the to that adapter and then our barrel which is going to be glued into that so i'm just going to go ahead and glue them and then i'll show you what it's all done uh, then we'll work on our trigger assembly uh, we'll put this back on and we will show you how to test the trigger. So I put the uh, back in, which is going to be our trigger eventually. Um, if you go like this and put it on a 9 volt battery, you can hear it click. Now, what I've just discovered um, under testing, I put a little bit of pressure in, and about 50 PSI, um, my one 9 volt was not able to open it. But if I was to take my two 9 volts, and put them together like so and run it um, so we've got this on the negative and the positive here just touch it here sorry there we go i got a better contact enabled open on my working model we have three 9 volt batteries hooked up so now the gun is complete except for the uh trigger mechanism so we're going to take the gun and we're going to move it out of the way we did pressure treat it test it and we tested it up to uh, 80 pounds of, uh, of pressure and it was working fine we're going to start working on the trigger unit which is a separate unit um, and then we're just going to go on there and I might actually make the trigger unit as a separate video uh, because you can uh, go from this and do multiple different trigger videos not everybody's going to want to see the trigger video so I'm going to do a trigger video as a separate video and then I'll show you the finish completion completed part again. Um, so this this is just as is using one battery I showed you just before. Um, we've got our chamber, we got everything ready. Um, I will paint this up. I'll actually take one of my uh, my um, spray cans, prime it up, and I'm gonna put flames on it. I'll paint it up nice and neat with um, with one of my uh, airbrushes and just kind of make it some cool looks on it but for now this is tested and we will do another video right after this with a the trigger building because it's a few different steps and it can get a little confusing if you don't know what you're doing 